Now you may need a belt for this action. Uh, I'll just show with and without the belt. So we're going to rotate the left arm and take it up the back. You can always give it a little bit of assistance to help it move up and then the right arm will come to clasp your fingers. But for many people this clasp is not going to happen because there's stiffness in the body and that's fine. So you can use a belt. If you don't have a yoga belt then you can use a, uh, a tea towel, something like that. That would be fine. All right, so you're going to put your belt over your right shoulder, stand in Tadasana, inner edges of the feet together, toes spreading, weight back into the heel bones, kneecaps, thigh muscles lifting, tailbone long and heavy. Just roll the shoulders back and down for a moment. Now extend out with your left arm, stretch into the fingertips, create the space in this shoulder joint, turn and rotate. So the thumb turns towards the floor and as you're turning you're rotating the arm in the socket but keeping the shoulder moving back. Now if it's difficult to get that palm up the back of the body then you can use the other hand to just give it a little assistance but don't force. So bring that up, keep the ribs back, keep the abdomen back, keep the chest lifting so those of you who may be able to get the back of the palm into that dorsal spine region, so if you're quite flexible in this region, then you may be able to get the back of the palm into the dorsal spine. So if you have, use it. Push the back of the palm into the dorsal spine, but move back with the ribs. Lift your chest. Stretch up with the right hand and then catch hold of your belt or your fingers. Keep your upper arm, that's your right arm, close to your right ear and keep the right elbow pointing towards the ceiling. If it's not going in that direction at the moment then just be aware that that's the direction that it needs to be going at some point. We don't get to these poses straight away. For many of us it takes some time to get into poses and we all have poses that are a little easier and ones that are a little more challenging for us. Okay, releasing and placing the belt onto the left shoulder. So one side may well be quite doable and the other side a little trickier. That's just the way of the world I'm afraid. So stretch out with the right arm. Create that space here in this shoulder joint and then turn and keep the shoulder back as you take the, the arm back and bringing the palm up your back. So again you can use your hand, your other hand, to give you assistance. Don't force it. Be kind to your body. Move the ribs back, move the navel back, stretch up with the left arm and bend at the elbow to catch. So catching the belt, catching the, um, the fingers. If you're just touching your fingers, use your belt because you will get some traction if you have hold of something. So keeping the weight back into the heel bones, moving that left upper arm towards your left ear, breathing, enjoying the pose. <laughs> Sometimes these poses can be very challenging and we have to work in them. So just let the breath flow, fine inhalation, fine exhalation through the nostrils. Okay, and releasing the hands out of the action. We're going to come now for Pajvottanasana onto the back bar of the chair. So I'm using a yoga chair here. Now if you don't have a yoga chair you can see what height that is. It could probably do with being a bit higher than that to be honest. So if you've got a table or a window ledge or uh, the back of a sofa those would also be fine to work to. So I'm just going to show you how we're going to work. You're going to turn the left foot out, right foot steps forwards. We're hinging forwards. Now this bar is going to be used 
for your dorsal spine. We're going to kind of push the dorsal spine region into the body. So remember what I said about it being like the fin of a dolphin. So that's got to move into the body and then we'll step forwards and do the other side. Okay, let's give that a go. Stand in Tadasana, put your hands on your hips, turn your left foot out slightly and step forwards with your right foot. Now turn the pelvis so that it faces towards the narrow end of your mat and weight down with your tailbone. Straighten your back leg, keep that back leg thigh muscle gripping to the bone. Now feel the dorsal spine area in this pose. Lift your chest, don't poke your ribs forwards. Lift your breastbone towards the ceiling and feel this area, this area of your spinal column moving into the body. Okay, stretching forwards, pulling back on this right leg, hands onto the back bar of the chair or onto your sofa so you may need to adjust your position you may need to move forwards or back pull back on your front leg thigh muscle thigh bone now see if you can activate that dorsal spine area just move it into the body we're just doing a gentle bouncing so that we can get that dorsal spine region just a little bit more alert and aware that it can move in the direction that it generally doesn't move. Okay, coming up and stepping forwards. Because this area of the back, of course, you know, when we're on computers, which we've all been doing a lot more of than we would normally do in this, um, uh, in this difficult time. So that area of the dorsal spine has to move into the body because that is the action that we tend to do when we're driving, when we're on computers. Our modern life is not um, conducive to good spinal health. That. Turn your right foot out, step forwards with your left foot, turn the pelvis to face towards the chair. Back leg strong and straight, thigh muscle gripping to the bone, this tailbone weighting down towards the floor, shoulders rolling back and down, ribs back, breastbone lifting up towards the ceiling. See if you can feel that area that you were doing in your Bharajasana twist moving into the body. Hinge forwards, hands onto the back of the chair. So adjust your, yourself or adjust your chair so that it's in the correct posi position so that you can use it to get some movement in this upper back. Pull back on that front leg, thigh bone and muscle, draw it back, draw it back, and then get some opening in this upper back region. Okay, coming up and stepping forwards out of the action. Good, well done. So we're going to come now for some uh, poses at the wall. Okay, so I want you to have a chair by the wall. If you haven't got a kitchen or dining chair, then you could always put your hands onto the seat of a sofa. So I'm just gonna show you how we're going to work. We're gonna come into dog head down and then dog head up onto the seat of the chair. So the hands will come down you will walk back, walk back. Now you have to press into the seat of the chair. You've got to lift your frontal pelvic bones up and that dorsal spine region, just get the awareness of it being there. Then we're going to swing forwards into Udva Mukha. You can just bring your feet in a little as we swing in to come into this dog head up. So again, we're working this upper back region and then swinging back into Adam Kushwanasana. All right, let's do that together. Hopefully you've got your equipment set up, you've got a nice wall to put your chair to, or if you don't have a chair, you've got a sofa, something that you can use to place your hands onto. But make sure it's good and secure. Hands onto your support and walk back. 
walk back, walk back. So some of you will be able to get your heels down, but don't just plonk down the heels. First of all, lift your kneecaps, lift your thigh muscles, lift here, frontal pelvic bones, have to lift up. Now push back with the roots of the thighs, keep your frontal pelvic bones lifting up. So it's as though you're going to, to be asked to stand up from this position. All right, you won't be able to stand up, but you know, that's the action that you have to have in the abdomen and the frontal pelvic bones. Now just see, can you feel that dorsal spine region and just move it in to the body? Just move it in. Just move it in. Okay, now look forwards. You can walk your feet in a little. Keep the feet hip width apart and swing through. So we're bringing the chest through the arms, broad across your collarbones. Keep those legs really strong and straight. Extend into your inner heels. Lift your breastbone towards the ceiling. And breathe. And now swing back. You may need to move your feet back a little bit. Press into the front of the support. Lift your frontal pelvic bones. Don't let your navel sink towards the floor. Your navel has got to lift up towards your spine. And then again, work that upper spinal region. Okay, well done. So we're gonna come now for an Uttanasana action. I'll just show you how you're going to work. Now again, if you don't have a yoga chair, you can just take your hands down to the seat of a normal chair. If you're working without a wall, then you can just take your hands down to the seat of a sofa, all right? If you've got a yoga chair or similar and you've got a wall, then you can lean your legs back to the wall. You can see that the legs are slightly angled and this just gives us a bit more action in the upper back when we're coming into the pose in this way. So either feet wide, hands down onto the seat of a sofa or onto the back of the sofa with your legs not leaning back, but if you've got a wall and a chair, lean yourself so that the legs are angled back and then come forwards, taking your hands onto the back bar of the chair Keep the breadth in the collarbones. Keep the lift through the frontal pelvic bones. Kneecaps lifting, thigh muscles lifting. And see if you can work that upper back region. Work the upper back, work the upper back. Okay, and slowly coming up out of the action. Okay, so we're gonna come into this action now. Danirasana. Um, so we're going to do the preparation for it and then if you're able to catch your feet, you can catch your feet. So you're going to lie onto your abdomen. I've put a blanket there because it's just a little more comfortable and you can see I'm lifting and lengthening these frontal hip flexors. Then if you're stretching your arms back, bringing your feet in and lifting your chest. Okay, to see, can you get some softness here in the buttocks as you do that? Okay, so let's do that together. Lie on your blanket, lift and lengthen the front of the, the pelvis. So you tuck your toes under to lift that. Lift and lengthen the front of the body. Lie on your abdomen, stretch your arms back, bend your knees in, Stretch your arms back and now you're going to lift your chest and see can you lift your thighs off the floor but keep this area soft. Okay, releasing down, resting the arms, resting the forehead. <clears throat> so just have a look at the screen quickly. So you're either going to repeat that or if you're able to hold on to the fronts of the ankles, then again, you'll lift, you'll push the feet 
into the hands to lift up into Dhanurasana bow pose. All right, let's give that a go. So lift and lengthen, lift and lengthen the legs, lift the front of the body, hands back. So either just lifting the chest, lifting the legs, if you're able to, or holding onto the fronts of the feet. So point the toes, inhale on an exhalation, push the fronts of the ankles into the hands, lift the thighs so that the chest lifts off the floor. Breathe, fine inhalation, fine exhalation, dorsal spine in, breastbone lifting. Okay, and releasing. Fold the arms, rest the head, let the toes come together, the heels come apart, and just rest down for a moment. <coughs> All right, and now slowly coming up, we're going to come into a Baravajasana twist onto the seat of the chair. So if you don't have a chair to do this on, then you can just come into your Baravajasana twist, putting a couple of foam pads or a brick like this. Do you remember we did this right at the beginning of the class? So you can do it like that if you don't have a chair. You don't need a yoga chair, just a dining chair would be fine. <clears throat> so we sit sideways and turn towards the back of the chair. Okay, so sitting sideways on your chair, lifting your chest, rolling the shoulders back and down, abdomen back to the spine, crown of the head extending up, dorsal spine in. Turn to the back of the chair, think about dorsal spine moving in, abdomen moving back, and use the chair back to help you open and elongate the spine. So keep the lift before you turn and breathe. Okay, releasing and coming to the other side. So pressing the feet into the floor, lifting the chest and turning towards the back of the chair. And releasing. Good, well done. So we're going to come into Shavasana now. I'm going to use a bolster underneath the knees, but if you don't have a bolster, you can roll a blanket, put a couple of cushions underneath the knees. It just softens the back after quite a strong action. And I'm also going to use a blanket for the head. You can use a cushion, whatever you have, have to hand. Make sure that you're warm enough It's been quite a strong sequence, so you do tend to cool down quite quickly. So make sure that the blanket comes underneath the head and the neck, but not underneath the shoulders. So that the shoulders are slightly lower down. Lift and lengthen the back of the neck. The bolster or whatever you're using, rolled blanket, goes underneath the backs of the knees and you roll the shoulders under so that the arms are slightly away from the body with the palms facing towards the ceiling and the fingers curling in towards the palms. All right, so come into your Shavasana in that way. So I'm going to leave you in your Shavasana Spend at least another three minutes in it. And when you come out of your poses, come out gently, slowly, and without disturbance to the nervous system. So thank you for joining me today. 
and I hope to see you again soon. Namaste.